What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to another Scarves and Spikes rating episode. It is uh, post-New England Revolution, Atlanta's home opener. 4-1 win for Atlanta, and it's Whew. celebratory. What's going on, guys? Not quite the um, 7-0 from 2017, but Touchdown. still feels good. Yeah, it still feels good to have a um, drama-free um, home opener. I don't know about you guys, but comfortable win. Oh, great. That's all I asked for. A little nervous early on when it was zero zero, uh, a little too long. Couple, couple close, close ones. Thank yeah. you, post. I was actually going to rate the post a ten if that was one of our of our ratings. You get a ten. You get a full ten, post. Thank you, thank they, you for everything they, that you do for us. They blew them out just like you wanted. So, mm-hmm. hey, a dominant win is a dominant win, and that's what you mm-hmm. wanted. So, I'll take that all day, every day. So. Plenty, plenty to talk about, plenty to get into, and with the ratings themselves, um, we're going to dive in in just a second. Obviously, we're going to go over it more on the show, live show Wednesday, but thank you to everybody that came out to the Signia Hotel and the Nest on Four Bar for the live show. We had a great turnout. It was a lot of fun. If you didn't come out for whatever reason, come out next time. We're going to be doing another one for the She Believes Cup, so mm-hmm. uh, come out and, and hang out and have a good time with us. It was fun. Yeah. I'm All still right. hungover. <laughs> hey, it's not even about that for me. I am tired. It, it, like daylight savings time hit me like a rock. I feel like they didn't publicize daylight savings time a whole lot. It just came out of nowhere. But maybe yeah, this was like maybe that rock. was the issue with New England. They're preparing for daylight savings time a day early. Nah, don't give them any I excuses. Don't know. <laughs> And, and we apologize. This is out of day late. It was my fault. I was so tired. I fell asleep in a parking lot at a garage station. <laughs> I would look, I get it. I was dead to the world yesterday. I was planning on coming on here, like with my sunglasses on and a cup of coffee. Right. And I, mean, I was so done. So I'm glad we pushed it back a day. Yeah. I just went to get milk and my kids thought like I didn't come home and my my son goes <laughs> my son goes, I thought you went out to get milk and never to return. <laughs> he walked out on us. He left. <laughs> we didn't see Tommy again for another twenty years. Right. Nope. <laughs> All right. Number oh, one. Happy Kirk day. Cousins Day. Sorry. Oh, Sorry, yeah. just if people want to happy Kirk Cousins Day for those that celebrate. All right, continue. Congratulations. What number is he gonna be? He'll be eight. He'll he'll pay Kyle Pitts. Okay. The number. Yeah. All right. Well, Atlanta sports Sorry. teams becoming more and more complete as we go. Yeah, Hopefully. exactly. All right, Yorgos Yakimakis. What do y'all got? We'll just dive right into it. I mean, come on. There's only one valid number this here. Easiest. This is like the easiest ratings we've ever done since we started doing this. I feel <laughs> right. like. Who would have predicted that he would score three goals? This guy. <laughs> and my, and my four-year-old. Yeah. Jace, Jace hit it, too. Well done. Well done. All right. Here we go. Oh, I mean, this is... Uh, Tommy, come on. Well, I mean, uh, three goals. I mean, that's, that's, that's a 10 for me. I'm just... Uh, is that so a three the, out of three? No. And you know what? You know who deserves a, a perfect 10? The... The communications, media team, everything. They got that picture of him with the finger in the air right yeah. above the three. That's great. How, how do you plan that? That was cool. How do you plan that? That was cool. There was a lot of good pictures that came from from this match. So, yeah, shout out to uh, all of the media guys and gals, all the photographers. Man, that was, that was some good stuff. But your AI post got a zero in my book <laughs> you know i was looking at that at like five in the morning on the way to the airport and i just kept staring at it and then i realized like that those characters didn't have eyes they just had like it was a horror movie one and of them the had, dude one of them had three, three arms i one know three arms. <laughs> three arms like it, it was it, like one of those things where like you stare at if you stare at it longer weirder things start happening in it yeah i'm gonna do it after every win from now on <laughs> i went down a rabbit yeah. hole Oh man! If you don't know, if you don't know what we're talking about, go to uh, our X account and you'll see it. Or, or if you have it. trouble sleeping, yeah, don't go. Don't at look night. at it. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's wonderful. Feel. <laughs> like, do we even need to talk about Yakimakis? I mean, hat trick, hat trick. First MLS hat trick. Third goal is a Galazzo from a 
crazy angle. Second goal was terrific team goal. That Lennon Yakimakis, Yakimakis collection man connection added again. We saw it so many times last year. I saw so a tweet. My friend CFT United tweet is it um, Lennon or not Lennon? Wrestled to Joseph all over again. I don't know if it's quite that, but it's getting there. It's getting there. It's well so, on its way. Yeah, sure. it definitely is. But yeah, I mean, easy ten, right? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Tommy, what you got? Just he's he's amazing, and we'll talk about it on Wednesday. But there's already talk of like a contract extension or mm-hmm. renegotiating his contract. Uh, I'm interested to see where it goes, but he deserves it. He's he's one of the best in the league for sure. Yeah, no, I he's agree. not a penalty merchant. Right, right. he's not. <laughs> hey, but that one kick started him like crazy. Yeah, that mm-hmm. one got. I mean, not that he. I think he had any kind of rust, but you know, in the locker room, he talked about um how he told the guys the day before, like, "I'm feeling good about this. Just feed me." <laughs> mm-hmm. And. He, he mentioned unprompted the whole Brooks Lennon connection with him, and he had talked about it last year too. And I just think it's it's something that, yeah, they're building up. Brooks Lennon talked about it last year, about how he doesn't have to pick his head up to know where Yakamakis yep. is going to be. So yep. when you have that kind of connection, what more can you ask for, right? To, to be able to put the ball on a dime like Lennon did and for Yakamakis to put that much power behind it, that was a beautiful team goal. And, and it started all the way from that back corner. Yep. So. Yeah, Ooh, but that was that was a little nervous back oh, there. Yeah. All right. Tripping up in the press box. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I wrote about it on Scarts and Spikes.com just about it giving up that penalty to Yakamakis and yeah, Yakamakis and Pineda said, you know, they helped his confidence. Who knows if Gigi gets a cat trick if he doesn't take that penalty. So yeah, shout out to Tiago for that. And Pineda mentioned you know, just the unselfishness in the moment for Tiago to see that too. GG, and you know we all know the rest of the story. So, yeah, curious how that goes for the rest of the year. Like, you know, like in Manchester United, they had Rashford and Bruno Fernandez go back and forth on it. I wonder how they yeah. they choose on who it was because like you tell like they run for the ball. Remember that one time where it was at Kubo and Barco were fighting over the ball? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> and then he missed it. He had to take it twice. I think they had to take it twice, and they missed both. <laughs> That's oh, the that key mention was... of the episode. Yeah, yeah. We <laughs> the we've the done episode. it. We're seven, not even eight minutes in yet, and there's right. a cool moment. And, um, yeah, I, I, I mean, there's not much else you can say, right? Like with the penalties, I think Almada is going to be your guy, you know. But then you end up with two penalties, so one more than you had last year <laughs> for the whole season, right? And yeah, um, yeah I mean, I think it was just it was stand up on on Almada's part to to let the guy that is the striker get that chance. And he put it away. You know, it, it wasn't like it was a, you know, corner or side of the net or anything like that. I mean, he just did what he had to do and sent the keeper the wrong way. And yeah. then he got going after that. Yeah. So, all right. Fought Mob. Our good friends at Fought Mob giving Yako Uh-oh. a 9.7. Okay. Oh, oh, fuck my, come on. Yeah. It's no fun. Was it, if he didn't fall down so much in the first 20 minutes of the match, he would have got a 10. Maybe. Maybe. He was taken Maybe. down a lot. But he's really good at flopping. He's yeah. really good. Like, <laughs> the the diving thing, like, just hold up the 10, right? Sometimes. He's, he's good right. at it. Yeah. All right. So, moving on from him, we've already kind of talked about him a little bit, but his partner in crime... Or at least in this goal, Mr. Brooksy. 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 <laughs> to quote Brad Guzan. <laughs> Brooksy. All righty. What do we got? Ready? Yeah. Yes. 8.8 for me. 7.5 for Sid. 7.5? Oh. One, One million dollars. <laughs> Well, so I'll go first. Listen, Tommy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Just keep throwing made up stuff out here. <laughs> Three. I'm, that, I'm still I'm still tired. I'm just slap happy. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll go first. I have the lowest score. Nothing against Brooks. Terrific, terrific cross. 
on the goal for Jakob Marcus to make it 3-0. Um, I mean, like everybody, like most everybody, it took him a little bit to grow into the match, which is why I kind of docked him maybe a couple points. But again, that that cross he made to Jakob Marcus is just vintage, and it's that connection that you know we've been talking about with them over and over again, and they've talked about, and we again just went over it. So I will get into it once more, but. Yeah, we need more of that. We need more of that um, feeding. We need him to feed Yakamakis, feed him and get him his goals, get him his opportunities. And again, we didn't see a lot of it in the first half. We saw we saw some crosses come in, but you know they weren't connecting. Those chances weren't coming. So again, that's why I kind of knocked Brooks down a point or two. But yeah, very good effort, very strong night. And again, the access to give Yakamakis that third goal, essentially put the match away. 2 nothing is not insurmountable, but yeah, it is still a pretty big lead. 3 nil is... It's the most dangerous lead stage. in soccer, man. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 3 nil is, you know, impossible, so to speak, with that much time left, or that little time left, I should say. But I was just a demoralizing I'm, goal. It's I'm like, wearing a Falcons jersey. No, what are you, no, what are you talking about blowing leads? <laughs> I get it. No. Or... <laughs> It, it was just a demoralizing goal, and that just took the wins out of New England sales. I mean, they already came in zero points through two in their first MLS matches. The first two MLS matches, they've had Champions Cup, so they were really tired, knowing that they needed to get this one to really get their MLS season on the right track and avoid taking no points through three. They didn't do that, of course, and that goal, again, was essentially the backbreaker, so... Credit to Brex for that service. And overall, like I said, terrific team goal. Yeah. Um, I'll go next because Tommy gave Brooks a million. So. <laughs> I thought I thought about docking him a point like Tyler or about like Cindy was going. I was gonna give him nine hundred and ninety nine thousand nine hundred and ninety nine. But you know, I didn't feel like, you know, doing the math. So go ahead. Oh yeah. <laughs> that That's tricky hard. subtraction. It'll get you every time. <laughs> every time by one. <laughs> too many, too many numbers to say. <laughs> Um, I think for me, Brooks did everything he was supposed to do, and then some. And, and and he wasn't perfect. I mean, if you look at his stats, there were some things that he was he was kind of. I don't want to say mid because that makes it sound like he wasn't. He was just average. He did above average at everything, but you, you know, you look at like his tackles, fifty percent, uh, ground duels, just over half, uh, didn't win his aerial duel, you know, things like that. So there's little little misses here and there, but. His work rate, man, it just, it's phenomenal. The guy, he, we've said it for years. And I, I honestly feel like he's probably in the best shape of his, at least his Atlanta United career, if not his career in general. So he just never stops moving and he, he puts in all the hard work. And he's, he talked, uh, last week at the bins during training about how, you know, he, he, he'll continually make the unselfish runs for his teammates to free up space and everything else. And he does that. And, He's so much more aware, him and Caleb both, of knowing you know when one is going to move forward to allow the other one to hang back and continue to be that that third defender. And so you know he, he's playing smart, he's playing quick. Um, I think he's enjoying it. He definitely has that connection with Yakamakis, and I just thought he put in a good shift. So and, and an above average shift as well. I mean, the dime to Yakamakis gives him plenty of points in my opinion. That was beautiful. But it's just all the other little things that he does so well. And he, he's just an unselfish guy, and I love it. I'm going to brag about my seats for a minute because they were badass. <laughs> Go yeah. on. All right. That's the closest I've ever sat. And I will notice, you can notice leaders out there, right? And and you don't notice that on TV. Like, even, like, when you guys go to the game, right? Like, you have an awesome view up there. Like, you could see things that, like, other people can't Well, on that's watching it on TV. And I watch 99% of the games on TV. But Brooks was a leader out there telling everyone what to do, especially on that side, right? Saba, uh, Gregerson. He, he was definitely, you know, telling Gregerson. Yakamakis did the same thing. Yakamakis quite a few times was yelling at Gregerson, like, telling him where he wanted that ball at. Because, like, when he passed it to him, he didn't get it in the spot he wanted to. And he was telling him what to do. And Lennon and and Yakamakis, two guys that were just very vocal on the field, telling people what to do. 
pointing them like th- those guys are leaders and what Lennon's part of I'm sure Yakamakis is also part of that leadership group you could tell out there on the field and yeah you know he wasn't perfect of everything that you just said but just when I see him out there the hard work that he has and all those years that he didn't get not get the recognition uh for everything that he did because he had Kubo and Aruju and every other bad name than Barry and cha-ching, and all cha-ching. those <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. The the all them, all the dollars in, in, in the swear jar. <laughs> all of those names, he just, I'm sorry, he got shit on for, for years. And yep. now we're getting, now he's getting his roses and he's getting his 1 million score. So that's why he gets a million. Thank <laughs> he's you. Pretty, um, he's pretty upset at uh, Saba in the first half. Oh, you know, he, yeah, he, he was. What a service in the box that they given given him and Lennon was, you know, frustrated with him. So. It goes back to the vocalness. It goes back to that kind of edge he plays with. You know, that he's picked up these past couple of years. He's really relevant coming to himself. And this has been this really good run of form. And he expects to get the ball when, you know, when he's in space. But, yeah, that goes back to, you know, his confidence and, you know, how he's improved so much since he's arrived here in Atlanta and since he stays at RSL even. Yeah. yeah, and being here long helps too, right? Like, being here longer. Like, didn't Yakamaka say, like, he wasn't ready to be a leader because he was, like, the new guy in the locker room? Like, he was still one of the newer guys around. And now, look, he seems to be coming more of that guy, right? He grew into it as the season went. And then he got a, He, he should have just got the cat. Kuzan should have handed it to him in that playoff game when he when he got Silva, you know, when he missed the, the shot that even Tyler could have made there. I know, man. Like, <laughs> hey, hey, we all miss him once. Yeah, <laughs> but that was the time where I was like, "Oh, this guy's my. This is my captain." Yeah, mm-hmm. no, I, I agree, and I don't know who else is on that leadership team. We know Brooks is on it because he he told everybody. But I think that's a really cool thing that they're doing. We'll talk more about that on on Wednesday as well. But yeah, I mean Brooks, he deserves it. He's the leader, and uh, or he's one of the leaders. And yeah, I, I just think. He's doing all the work that needs to be done, and he needs to get the call up again from Greg Berhalter sooner than later. So, of course, it would help if the men's national team had somebody dead set as a striker (laughs) as well, but that's a topic (laughs) for a different day. (laughs) Much different day. So, all right. So, and he got... This guy in Mexico played pretty well. I'll just throw it out there. So, Greg, if you're watching... (laughs) Former L- retire. Former MLS player, my dude. Or just retire, whatever. <laughs> don't Sorry. don't don't piss anybody off. <laughs> you've you've seen US soccer Twitter. Like every probably, yeah. probably everybody's cheering me on right now. <laughs> Congrats to the women's national team for the yeah. W Gold Cup win, by the way. Exactly. All right. Brooks got a eight point three from Fop Mob. So that's close. That's close. I mean, for Fod Mob, I think that's pretty fair. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, did we both just say we were close? <laughs> I said that was close-ish. <laughs> you went over. Yeah. Oh, just like, Price is right. Bit. Yeah. One dollar. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, <All right>. Drew. <laughs> Take his job. Next up, Derek Williams, our good center back friend. I think this is the, the toughest one for me. Yeah, I have, I, some feeling, I have some feelings on Gregerson. Man, that dude's tall, by the way. Never realized yeah. you don't realize how tall people are until like you're near them, right? Yeah. Sometimes you're like, I met the big show once, you know, WWE is the big show. I was he's like, oh tall, man, right? this guy's huge, right? Like on TV, he's like, oh, he's pretty big. No, that guy's huge. But Gregerson's like mini big show. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. I don't know. I got mine ready. Yeah, I'm yeah. ready. All right. I'm going to give him a seven even. Oh, 7.8. 78? Jeez. <laughs> Sorry, drama queen. Give him my score. 6.8. 6.8. Okay. Why 6.8? I haven't done the full rewatch yet for Wednesday, but I just thought he was okay. I, I thought him and Gregerson at, at points started to struggle. I mean, I, was, I only got to really watch the first half of that side because I was more towards the corner over there. I just thought he was okay. Um, I thought he wasn't aggressive at some points um, where he probably should have been. I still feel like he's kind of slow. I said that last week 
uh, at least watching him. I don't know. There's just, I think he's okay. I think he's better than what Abram was. I wasn't an Abram fan last year. Um, I still think that it takes a while for these two to to mesh, Gregerson Williams to, to mesh together. And you could and you can tell, obviously tell that these two are not, especially Gregerson, are not in sync with where the like I just said earlier, where some of these guys want the ball. There was one point where Gregerson was like all the way in their half of the field. I know we're not talking about him. I'm sorry, I'm ranting. <laughs> Anyways, I just think he's okay. I just think that he's an MLS, you know, above average defender. That's what you need, and he's fighting Abram for the spot. But I, I, I can't say I was impressed. I say he was above average, and I didn't see anything more of that. Okay. For me, no glaring mistakes, like major, major mistakes, like we saw last year. Um, maybe docked him a little bit because of the goal that they gave up. I don't know if that's his fault, but you know. Yakimakis was down there and a couple of other players. I don't know if I blame Williams for that fully, but yeah, he, he he was really good, really good, not great, but really good ish, I guess. And that's why I kind of kind of vacillated. I didn't want to rate him too low, but I think he really played, I guess, well enough to deserve that higher rating. So, I mean, seven point eight ish or seven point. Five, somewhere around that range is where I would rate him, I think. Um, but again, Tommy, like you were saying, is it could take a little time for these guys to gel. They're just two new center backs getting used to each other. The brand new team, one has been in MLS for a number of years. The other is getting used to MLS, hasn't ever played in this league. So it's going to be an adjustment. There's going to be getting used to the speed of MLS, the physicality of MLS, Really good parity of MLS as well for Gregerson, at least. Williams is all about it, but, you know, again, this is a new system, a new environment for him, a new city. Um, same league, but still a lot of adjusting that he needs to do as well. And I don't think that will really come outside of game time. I mean, you can train for it as much as you can, but, you know, game time, time on the pitch, can't. You know that that will take that won't replace time on the pitch is what I'm saying. So I'll look for that to improve a little bit more as the season goes on. Yeah, isn't it funny how like we always talk about chemistry, right? And I think at least with Atlanta, you're always referring to chemistry as how many goals can be scored because Atlanta's an attacking focused team, right? They want to have that that fun attacking soccer, and when it clicks, it's a thing of beauty. And it's been clicking quite well over the past calendar year for the most part. But we're so quick to be like, man, a defender, they just, it's just not, not working for them. Right. But in reality, like they just, they need as much time, if not more to build that same kind of chemistry as attackers do, you know, they, they have to, it, it's yes, it's different objectives An attacker, you know, a, a, a number 10, the wingers, your striker, they all have to be on the same page. But the defenders, it's it's so much off the ball stuff and knowing where they want to build out from and where they need to move and knowing where your partner's at um, to pick up the runner and all that kind of stuff. Because you, you that's where it's really important because you you miss one runner into the box. Don't even get me started on last year. And then you have last year, right? Which, side, side note, Slish, I think, handled himself really well with a lot of that kind of stuff. But they they need the time. I agree. That's my very roundabout way of agreeing with with Sydney's point. Yes, they just need time. I think individually, Derek. I mean, I didn't think he had a bad game. There was two moments though that he that stood out to me where I thought he he put out, and I don't remember what minute, but it was in the first half, about the first thirty minutes or so. But he had a really good moment just tracking back and. He, he put on the burners, and he saved what could have been a goal. And then going back to the Lennon assist to Yakamakis, that started back there with him and Caleb and I think Tyler Wolf, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, all just kind of – maybe it wasn't Tyler Wolf yet. Anyway, back in that corner, playing out of the back. Yeah, he wasn't then. And, but he had that, that you know calmness to play through all that pressure, and that's what opened up the field. And so – yeah, not perfect, but 
I still think it's a step up over pretty much anything that Atlanta's had over the past year or two. So I'm not mad at it. Me neither. And Fop Mob kind of disagreed. Fop Mob gave him a 6.7. That's harsh. A little yeah, harsh. I think it's a little harsh. Didn't I give him a 6.8? You did. So you're close. Oh, you're close. As- you, you're harsh, Tommy. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, you didn't call me harsh. Well, Sorry. To- there's Sorry a line between harsh. that 6.7 and the 6.8. <laughs> All right. Do we so, do Lennon's Fop Mob, by the way? We did. You know what? I we think did. we did. Eight, now it eight, just eight, hit eight, me. Three, three, three. Okay. Cool. Yeah. 8.3. Uh, that's right. Derek with the 6.7, which leaves our last player mm. of this episode, mm. Mr. Saba Lobjanidze. Mm. This Was is Derek one. the lower, the lowest? I don't know if this is a spoiler for, for Saba, but who was our lowest player on the team? Yes. Okay. Yep. I would... If Williams I had to was? guess who this, yeah, Williams was, yeah, okay. If I had to guess, just of who would be the second lowest, just for fun, while we're writing these numbers down, would it be Caleb? Sydney, what do you think? Probably. It became... <laughs> yes, probably. It was okay. Was it really okay? He had a six point nine. Nice. All right. Um... <laughs> There it is. I'm a child. I'm a child. Uh, I-, I thought he had. I, I mean, a lot of the attack really focused on the right side there, you know, especially early on. But I, I kind of liked how he advanced the ball at points. I thought he did a, a decent job, but just didn't stand out as much as I, you know, I hope yeah. as he grows into the season, yeah. it, it gets better. Yeah, that's fair. All right, here we go. Oops. Seven point one for me. Six point five for me. Dead even seven, seven for Tommy. I, I mean, it's early, and maybe this is overinflating expectations based on how he did when he first signed with Atlanta United. But I don't know if Saba's form has quite been there since late last year, to be honest with you. Um, he's. He scored a pseudo goal, I guess. Um, that was eventually I mean, wiped out. He got robbed of a goal. <laughs> no, but um, I don't know. It's just uh, he, he's just his form has just been shaky. I think that continued on Saturday night to some extent. I mean, I don't want to say he was bad, but he wasn't, you know, he wasn't the player that we saw when he first came to Atlanta United. And it's, I think it's too early to be concerned that this is just a long spell of bad form. But, you know, it's just something that's different about Sada, something that's missing a little bit. Uh, the spark is a little dimmer than it was perhaps when he first came to Atlanta United. So I think we saw that on Saturday. He got a good position to score. Again, kind of got taken off or robbed, what have you. But, yeah, outside of that, I mean, there are some good moments and some bad moments, but I don't think he stood out in any way on Saturday. And again, that kind of goes back to last year. I mean, he was good, really good last year when he first came, but we haven't seen that. Now, we didn't see that too much against Columbus. Um, we didn't see a lot against uh, New England, so... Hopefully it's something that he kind of shakes out of, kind of works his way out of this sort of slow Thor run of form and comes out a much better player against Orlando, but wasn't super impressed with Saba on Saturday. We mentioned the moment Lennon won its service. Saba didn't give it to him and Lennon was upset. So, yeah. What you got, Tommy? Who did you, de- who did you just describe? Another player that came in real hot, scored a bunch of goals early on. Just oh, asking gosh. a question. I'm not trying to cause anything. I'm I won't charge you a dollar. I won't charge you a dollar. I promise I won't. It. Say it. I, I, I know who you, I know who you're talking about. Everyone else knows who you're talking about. All right, blink three times if it's Aruju. <laughs> <laughs> but to be One, fair, he didn't two, really three. score that many goals. 
and the, and again, and by the way, Saba was Saba. Well, yes, he is a DP, but he is a lot less than the other guy. But I'm yes. just messing with you. <laughs> it was just as you were describing it, it was like <laughs> no, I, you, it was I, like I get it. <laughs> PTSD. I was like, no, <laughs> where's Aruju? Where is uh, he? I don't, think, I don't think we're there yet. I don't think we're there yet. But I think he needs. Needs to continue building it up with Yakamakis, like that chemistry. I think Sylvan Yakamakis have a very good sense of where each other are. Like I, I'm more comfortable with that side as I am with that. And then, like you talked about earlier, um, Lennon and Saba kind of just seemed off, right? Like they had some. Lennon had some nice passes to him to get him, you know, some space to move. And you know, the first half, I thought, you know, Saba had quite a few chances to be able to do something there. They got to get it figured out there for sure. But yeah, it's too early, you know, to, to make the Aruju joke here. But yeah, I think it's it's got to go because we complained about it in the preseason that he just did not stand out at all. And it really hasn't gotten better. Right. And some players start off slow. So maybe he is. We don't really know what his how he starts a season yet. Right. So hopefully, you know, he starts warming up here. But, you know, if you think. As we we're just like thinking about his goals, a lot of them were just coming in super late. He was he was kind of like a Tyler Wolf, right? Right place, right time on quite a few of those goals. Because like Tyler Wolf wasn't scoring bangers most of the season. Tyler Wolf was in the right place at the right time, and that's exactly what Saba did last year. I mean, he scored a bang. Saba did have that one banger. Uh, it was on the road somewhere. I forget where it was, but I mean, he had that one really nice goal. I think it was outside the box. Yeah, just but, outside. Yeah. The right side of the box yeah yeah i like i remember that but a lot of the other ones were just kind of like oh here it is i'll just you know mm. back heal it Which, in yeah that's a, fine that's a skill that's a fundamental you know i mean yeah you got to be in the right place i get it yeah. pulcher pulcher instinct right yeah I see dp he's got to score some bangers man i i i'm gonna disagree a little bit with y'all i think i, I think y'all are just being a little hard on on our guy Cause it was almost, it was almost Sabaton like six times that day. He was the one that created the first really good chance, like just a few minutes in, right? Like he, and I forget how the whole play played out, but he did a lot of dribbly boy stuff and made his way into the the box and took a shot. Mm -hmm. and It was just wide, you know. Um, Yakamakis was there. mad though. Oh, Yakamakis yeah. wanted that ball bad, <laughs> and and maybe the decision making I think is is maybe what's I, I'm not trying to put words in y'all's mouth. But I think that the decision making is just where I'm like, maybe that that could be better. I think that's maybe where the little bit of a disconnect is because I think he's getting in the right places. His footwork is good enough to take on pretty much anybody, you know. And I think yeah, it just it's just that final decision making that's been a little a little different this year so far. But this year is two games. I I do agree. His preseason maybe wasn't the best. He was nowhere to be I, found. Yeah, he, yeah. He, he was invisible the entire preseason. And I think it's definitely way too early to start sounding any kind of alarm for sure. Yeah, but right. I just but we've been hurt before, Tyler. We've I know been we have. Hurt before. <laughs> I know. I know we have. But I mean, I don't know. To me, he, he passed the eye test. The numbers more or less back it up. He had two shots on target. He got it. He was robbed of a goal. All right. He was in the right place <laughs> at the right time. He was robbed of a goal. Um. And then in the second half, he also had an opportunity where he went to go take a shot, and it just was right at the keeper, you know. Um, he wasn't credited an assist on the fourth goal, but that was where it was. the ball was kind of doing a ping-pong thing back and forth over the yeah. top of the box. And he has the wherewithal to see Almada at the top of the box in Almada's favorite place to be in the world, plays it to him perfectly, and then Almada takes a shot, takes a deflection. Yakamakis traps it and, and does what he does. But I just think he was unlucky. I'll call it unlucky at this point. Now, if we're having the same conversation in May, yeah, all right, you know, then we can we can have a discussion. I just think he was unlucky and maybe make the decision making a little bit better. But I'm not counting Saba out. I like Saba. Yeah, I think he's gonna be fine. Yeah. So. Sorry, Saba, I didn't mean to compare you to <laughs> that who shall not be named. <laughs> Voldemort. 
Yeah, it's not um, our Ruju time. It's not our Ruju time. <laughs> no, it's not. No, oh Saba. If 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 noon is Saba o'clock, he got to like eleven fifty five. He did yeah. everything, almost everything right. So, Fat Mob gave him. Actually, this is interesting. Fat Mob gave him a seven point three. Okay. Okay. So what was Silva? Higher. Seven point eight. Makes Sounds sense. about right. You yeah. know, it's actually kind of crazy. Everybody was in the sevens. Ex- well, seven or above, except for Williams and, and Wiley. Hmm. Almada got an eight point seven. So, and just for fun, oh, okay, that's not including the subs because they gave Tyler Wolf a six point one and Jay Fortune a five point nine. Yeah, Jackson Carter got a seven though. Yeah, you can't take too much from the substitutes. Um, no, I'm tripping. I'm sorry. They they, they 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 shafted me. They put it on the wrong side. Okay, Tyler Wolf got a six point seven. Jay got a six point one, and Mosquera got a six point five. The others uh, weren't rated at all. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, I was wondering about Dax. I mean, seven point was was not that long, but yeah, makes uh, sense. Yeah. All right, cool, good stuff. Uh, that's our second ratings episode of the year. It is. We did this on Monday, like like. Tommy said we were a little tired after Saturday evening, just a little, <laughs> just a little bit. So, uh, but yeah, we'll be back at it again after the Orlando game, probably on Monday as well, because it's a Sunday match at home on St. Patrick's Day. So we'll be back at it again. But Wednesday, y'all come check out our live show at seven o'clock on YouTube, as usual, Twitch, Twitter, mm-hmm. all the good places. And I will maybe have a really cool guest. We're kind of working on that still, but mm. Kirk Cousins, know. Kirk Freaking Cousins, new quarterback of the Falcons. I, he can come in and talk about Atlanta United. He's welcome. Open the invite, Kurt, if you're watching. <laughs> come on, buddy. <laughs> we won't ask you any Falcons questions, I promise. Yeah. <laughs> Hand the ball to Bijan. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, cool. We appreciate it, guys. Make sure you follow us on Twitter, Scarves, the letter N Spikes. Go to scarvesandspikes.com. Everybody's getting articles up on there. We got a lot of good Atlanta United content and other like USL next pro all that good stuff um instagram scarves and spikes patreon.com slash scarves and spikes where you can support independent soccer coverage helps us keep the lights on read henry's article it's great yes it really is yes yeah he he did a really good job with that one so yes go scarves and spikes.com go check them all out and with that we will see y'all on wednesday see you guys Hey, F Orlando.